Thank <laughs> you. 
what was the essence of preaching of Srila Bhakti Vedanta Saraswati Thakur, Bhakti Vedanta Swami Maharaj. That may be the essence of Srila Rupa Goswami. Oh, I request the senior most disciple of Swamiji, Sri Shri Jadurani or Shyamrani. Oh, in fact, not more than 15 minutes. You can understand me. First, I offer my unlimited obeisances and to just the lotus feet of my Paramaraja to my Guru Paramaraja. Nichalila Pravishta Aham Vishnu Pada Astokita Sita Sri Shima Chula Bhakti Vedanta Swami Prabhupada And the same unlimited obeisances in the dust of the lotus feet of my Paramaraja to my Guru Pada Padma Aham Vishnu Pada Astokita Sita Sri Shima Chula Bhakti Vedanta Narayan Gosai Maharaj To all of our Guru Varga and all the assembled devotees when I first met Srila Gurudev in 1992, he gave me quite a surprise in explaining what is the essence of our Srila Prabhupada's teachings. And I even challenged him and asked, where does it say that? That our Srila Prabhupada came for the same mission as Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu which was also a surprise to me when I met Srila Gurudev in 1992. I said, where does it say that? Immediately he said, it comes from the Chaitanya Charitamrita, Adi Lila chapter 1 and chapter 4. Anarpita chiring charat kurunaya vatirnam kalo samar paitam unat odvalarasam so bhakti sriyam hari purita sandaram duti kadam basandi pitaha that is, our Srila Prabhupada being uh, the embodiment of Gaudavani Pracharane. That is, he came to give the teachings of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And what are the teachings of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu? There are certain verses which are the essential verses which describe his entire mission and whole books are based on that particular slok. For example, the Mangalacharanam slok, main Mangalacharanam slok of Chaitanya Charitamrita, which all the rest of the 17 volumes explains, is this verse in Arpita Charing Charat. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu came to give what no other incarnation or uh, acharya ever gave before in this day of Brahma. In the previous day of Brahma, this teaching was given by the same Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And our Srila Prabhupada is Gauravani Pracharane. Srila Gurudev gave two lectures in his last tour in Holland and Alachua. What is the meaning of Gauravani Pracharane? So one verse that ex explains this is this verse in Arpita Chiring Charat. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu came to give what no other incarnation or acharya ever gave before except the previous day of Brahma when Mahaprabhu himself gave it and that is Unat Ojvalarasam Svabhakti Priyam Svabhakti Sriyam That is, he came to give um, as Gurudev said this morning the service of Srimati Radharani, 
In Paraki Abhav, in Unat Ochularas, there are two kinds of Unat Ochularas. One is, and they're both Parakiyaras, one is the direct relationship with Krishna, and that is called um, Kamatmika, Kamanuga, uh, Sambhogatmika, Bhakti. And that is the service of Srimati Radhika, Lalita, Vishaka, and so on. Then that Onat Ojvalara song, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu did not come to give. He did not come to give the service that Srimati Radharani herself gives, but he came to give a great treasure. Srila Prabhupada translates the word Sriyam as treasure, but a treasure chest is usually known to be locked. So Srila Prabhupada's books are also locked up and one requires the pure devotee, another pure devotee, who has the key to unlock that treasure chest. I once came for a Manushiksha class in Mathura that Srila Gurudev was giving in English in 1994. That day, I didn't know it, but the um, class was called off and Gurudev was just speaking to some uh, Indian, speak, Hindi-speaking devotees. But I came, I spent an hour traveling to get there. So he felt he had to say something to me to make that trip worthwhile since I wasn't going to get a class. So one sentence he said was like a million classes. He said, so now I've given you the shovel to dig deeply into Srila Prabhupada's books. So this word, Shriyam, which Prabhupada puts as his word-for-word -word synonyms, treasure, when you unlock that treasure chest, you find, by Srila Gurudev's mercy, that Shriyam means sobam, or beauty. The beauty of the creeper, which winds around the tree, is its leaves and fruits and flowers. The creeper is Srimati Radhika, and the tree is Krishna. And the service to Srimati Radhika doesn't have the beauty without its beauty. And what is the beauty? The beauty is the leaves, fruits, and flowers, which are Srimati Radhika's assistance in her service in Paraki above to Sri Krishna, and that is her sakis and her manjaris, or maidservants. Srila Gurudev gives the example of a bee. The bee uh, goes on to the flower to relish the honey in the flower. And the bee will not sit on the um, stamen or the manjari of the flower because it's always moving. So uh, Krishna sits or he enjoys amorous affairs with Srimati Radhika and that is one kind of ujvaladas. But the other kind, tat tat bhava ichtatmika, is the kind that Chaitanya Mahaprabhu came to give the fortunate jivas. And that is that stamen or manjari on top of the flower, which has no interest. It's always going back and forth, saying no, no. No interest in a personal relationship with Krishna, but only desiring to assist Srimati Radhika and getting their full pleasure in the meeting of Srimati Radhika. When there's distress of Srimati Radhika in her separation from Krishna, then they are also feeling distressed. And when Srimati Radhika is in a superior position, or when they're meeting, or when she's defeated Krishna, then they also feel uh, successful in their life. So, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu came to give this. Another essential verse of Gauravani, which our Srila Prabhupada embodies, Gauravani Pracharane, is Arajya Bhagavan Purjay Shitanayas Tadhama Vrindavana. That is, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is teaching that our Arajdev is Bhagavan Sri Krishna Purjay Shitanaya. It's not Dwarkadish, it's not Mataresh, it's not Lord Narayan, but it's Purjay Shitanaya, the son of Nanda Baba, the son of Nanda Maharaj and Jashomati Nanda. And Burjesha Tanaya Tadama Vrindavanam, and his abode is equally worshipable. Then, um, Araju Bhagavan Burjesha Tanaya Tadama Vrindavanam, 
Ramya Karchit Upasanam, the Upasanam or the worship of the uh, Braja Ramanis or the young gopis is the highest um, means of worship of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Our Prabhupada, in fact, used the word uh, kalpita manufactured. They manufactured something, but because they are the supreme knowers of Krishna, being the highest bhaktas, and as Krishna told Arjuna in the Bhagavad Gita, I am only known by unalloyed bhakti. As I am standing before you, I can only be understood by unalloyed bhakti. The bhakti of the gopis, and particularly Srimati Radhika, is the highest, and therefore their so-called manufacturing is absolute reality, because they know best Krishna, his moods, better even than he knows himself, and they know how to worship him. Where is the evidence for this? The evidence is in Srimad Bhagavatam. Ramya Karchirupasanam Brajabadu Bhargena Jakalpita Srimad Bhagavatam Puranam Amalam. And the best evidence for this is Srimad Bhagavatam, where Krishna himself tells the gopis that I have no capacity to repay you. Your activities themselves will have to be its own payment. Krishna says in the Gita that as they surrender to me, I reward them accordingly. But Krishna told the gopis, I have no capacity to reward you accordingly. I'll always remain indebted to you. Even if I try for a day of Brahma, I won't be able to repay my debt to you. So the evidence is Srimad Bhagavatam. Then, whose opinion is this? Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu Matamidam. This is his idea, his opinion. Tatradaro Naparam. And Srila Viswanath Chakrabari Thakur is saying, I have no other uh, interest, there's no interest in anyone else's opinion than the opinion of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. His other essential teaching is taught to us by Srila uh, Bhakti Vinod Thakur in his Das Mula Shiksha. That is, this is the teaching that Chaitanya Mahaprabhu gave to the jivas, that Sri Krishna is the absolute truth, He's the embodiment of all shaktis, all powers, and the reservoirs of all rasas. There's two kinds of living entities, those who are conditioned and those who are liberated. The conditioned souls turning away from him and the liberated souls turning towards him. This material world is, and the jiva is simultaneously one with and different from the Lord. The means to reach the ultimate goal of life is sadhan bhakti, and the goal of life is prema bhakti. These are the essential teachings of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu to the fortunate jivas. So our Srila Prabhupada being Gauravani Pracharane, this is what he came to give us, the same thing that Chaitanya Mahaprabhu came to give us, because our Srila Prabhupada's heart is one with the heart of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, who is Krishna, who came as Chaitanya Mahaprabhu to become one with the heart of Shrimati Radhika, that is our Srila Prabhupada. We're praying on you. Can you tell who made this two slokes about Swamiji? You disciples of Swamiji, can you tell who made this originally? Can you? Who <laughs> did? You are all senior devotees of Swami Ji. Huh? Himself. Himself, really. All requested him that we want to uh, pranam mantra like Siddha Bhakti Siddhan Saraswati Namam Vishnu Padaya. Krishna Krishna and they requesting and requesting at least he has to make it. Anyone disciples are not so much qualified to do this. So mercifully he did. Mercifully he did. He was very great learned scholar and 
like knowing all Siddhant. So I know that he has done really. You heard the his object Gaurubani. What is Gaurubani? Oh, she explained it. That I told in a or anywhere, I don't remember. So, Gaurvani, Aradhyo Bhagavan Vijay Shatanyas, this is Gaurvani. And also Anarpit Charin Chira. And one shlok Srila Bhakti Vinod Thakur has done. Amnaya Praha Tattam Bharini Haparamam Sarva Shakti Mrsa. This is Gaurvani. Govinda Prabhupada, can you explain and glorify hmm? how your Gurudev very quickly in couple of years he preached about entire world hmm? very quickly hmm? and what is the essence of his teachings very quickly <laughs> He preached it more quickly than I can. I can't say it as fast as he can. Can you hear? Working, working. Haribo, He was so many years serving his Gurudev and his senior, so I told him. Like Narada, when Narada left his home, his mother had passed away, he went to, he was anxious, he had had good Sangha. And so he was in that Sangha, he was inspired. So he went and he finally came to meditate. And because of his inspiration and the Sadhu Sangha he had had, immediately he had the vision of God. And, but something strange happened. That vision disappeared immediately. So he wanted to refocus and have more of that same thing. He was, his heart was becoming anxious. And then uh, he said to him, the Lord said, there's a reason that I'm doing this, like playing cat and mouse. Etat uh, kamayate. It means I'm doing this just to increase your hankering. So, and in the same way, that mood of hankering, beginning there in the first canto of Srimad Bhagavatam and extending all the way up to the things that Shamarani Didi just mentioned, in the tenth canto, Ras Panchadhyaya of Srimad Bhagavatam. This, the entire purpose is to increase the hankering for Krishna, Rati, Bhav, Prem. Like Mahaprabhu said, Nayanam Galada Shudaraya, Gadgada Rudhaya, Gira, Gira, Badanam Gadgada Rudhaya, Gira, Nichitam Papukada, Always Mahaprabhu was wondering, when will tears flood my face when I chant Harinam? And when will my voice get choked and I can't even speak anymore when trying to chant? And when will the hairs stand on my body? So in this way, it's like the benchmark that all our Acharyas have given to measure Krishna Consciousness. Uh, like Srila Bhaktivinoda Thakur said, Kunibo lu tibo harinam rasa namarase mati hoivo vishbas. The same thing, when will I have this deep taste for the nectar of the holy name of Krishna? But he also, in the same verse, gave the secret how to have it. 
Rasarara Sika Charana Parash, by touching the feet of those who are Rasarara Sika, who can taste, who know, who are expert in tasting the transcendental mellows themselves. By touching their feet, I will know how to hanker for the same thing. So, by injecting this mood in the hearts of so many of us, our Srila Prabhupada, like, like, a, like a dispensary, gave out so many packets of medicine and packets of sweets. Like maybe after uh, the Pravachan tonight, Maharaj will give out some sweets. In the same way, Srila Prabhupada Bhaktivedanta Swami Maharaj gave out sweets everywhere. And some had some sukriti, or maybe no sukriti, but somehow or other they were able to taste through no qualification. So like that he came and picked up so many of us. And also I wanted to say that he, he, he gave the secret, like Bhaktivinoda Thakur in that verse, Srila Prabhupada gave the same secret. Krishna Bhakti, Krishna Bhakti Janma Mulahoi Sadhu Sangha, Krishna Prem Janme Teno Punak Mukyanga. He said that the association with sadhus is like an electrical current. Srila Prabhupada always gave this example of a powerhouse and a plug. The powerhouse is Krishna and Parikar, but the plug is the pure devotee who preaches Krishna Bhakti everywhere. So you can plug anywhere into that. Here in this room we can plug in and get the same power as the powerhouse. Here in this room we can plug in and get the same power as the powerhouse. So Srila Prabhupada also gave the principle of Tad Anuragi Jananugami, that by the association of those who have, who are Rasarasika, who can actually taste the sublime mellows of Krishna Bhakti in the mood of, uh, in the mood of Braj, then those pure devotees are like the plugs where we can tap into the power source and get that pure Krishna Bhakti ourselves. Thank you. Special reason. We, some of them, have div divisiated by that. We are divisiated. Not from Golo, Vrindavan, but really from borderline. That is Tatastha, Tatastha position. Not from Golo. Anyone going to Golok, how they can return back to this world? They can. Jadagatva. Nani vartante. Taddham parma mama. And that is why. It is paramdha. Why? Oh, Devi dham. Swarga. Tapolo. After that, Brahmalo. From Devi Dham, Mohini Lo, oh, anyone can return back. But in, in that Dham, who is Param Dham, Param, who is Param? Supreme. Like Krishna, no difference between his Dham and him. So Param Dham, so anyone cannot deviate from that land. So, but anyhow, we have 
from marginal line. We have forgotten him. So, to remind this, Krishna himself comes. He sends his rep representatives. Sometimes he comes in Ram form, Nishing form and other form. So remind us that you must hmm, back to God and back to Him. Back to God and back home, back to God. Ah, your home is there. So how to go? How to go there? That uh, that was his mission or object. So we should try to follow him. So in the, in the conclusion, we know that in our constitutional form, position, we are all nitya servant, eternal servant of Krishna. We cannot be happy in this world, this relative world. You cannot. By any position, by money, by position, for anything, you cannot. So, we know that we should practice Bhakti Yoga. Without practicing Bhakti Yoga, you cannot attain your, that original constitution position. Never and never. So, <coughs> mercifully Krishna has manifested Srimad Bhagavatam. That is the authority book, more than Vedas and Upanishad and Tura. So, all the Goswami books have come from or that very Srimad Bhagavatam. In each and every line of Srimad Bhagavatam, all this transcendental siddhant has been given. Sabai punsam paro dharmo jato bhakti adokkaje ahek tukya apriyatata ya bhakti purushottame bhakti. But what is that bhakti? We should know. It is not any speculation of mind. A speculation of mind. Nothing. In Srimad Bhagavatam, I am, especially Rupa Goswami has told, by the inspiration of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Really, this is sloka of bhakti is from Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. He inspired him in uh, prayer. prayer, and after that, he inspired in Jagannath. And he requested his all associates to be merciful, to sprinkle mercy on Rupa Goswami, so that he can know my heart and he can give to this world. So Chait Rupa Goswami has written, Anya Vilasita Sundam, Gyan Karmadhyana Abhritam, Anukullena Krishna Anusilanam Bhakti Ruttama. Oh, what is the meaning? I want that all should know this is slow. If you cannot remember, but the essence of this slope should be remembered always. And try to follow this is slow. Then bhakti will come. <coughs> As Srila Gurudev has mentioned, there are various verses in the scriptures which are describing the glories of bhakti. Srila Gurudev has mentioned the verse, Savai Pum Sapuro Dhamo. More louder. Yato Bhakti at Hokshade. Hokshade Apatiata Yatma Supersidity. That the supreme occupation of all activities, of all persons, is to render devotion service to the Lord. And such devotion service should be a hoituki and a pratiata. It should be causeless, without motivation, and it should be uninterrupted. 
So, though this verse, this is describing very clearly what is Uttama Bhakti, but still, Srila Rupa Goswami, he has described one verse, which is in Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu, which is said to be the emperor verse describing what is Uttam Bhakti. Anyabilasita Sunyam, Gyana Kama Anabitam, Anukulyena Krishnanu Shilam Bhakti Uttama. That the cultivation of all activities of the body, mind, words, but most importantly, of the moons, which are directed towards the pleasure of the Supreme Lord, which are not covered by fruitive activities, means that we have to perform activities. We have to perform karma. But these activities should not um, in any way um, be a hindrance to our performance of bhakti. That it should not be covered by gyan, knowledge, means that it should not be covered by any type of impersonal knowledge. And in a higher sense, for those who have achieved the higher realms of bhakti, then Aishvarya gyan, knowledge of the um, opulences and supremacy of the Lord should not cover one's mood in Madhurya Gyan or Shuddha Bhakti. And also the mystic um, desire for mystic perform, um, attainment, um, mystic cities, that these should not cover one's Bhakti. That the Bhakti should be flowing like a stream of honey unbroken. And in all circumstances, it should be favorably disposed for the pleasure of Krishna. So when such bhakti is continuous, unbroken, and without any hindrance, then it is said to be Uttama Bhakti. Thank you. So clear more. Stand up and clear more in your words. I ask anyone, whether lady devotees or male devotees, all should be prepared to explain, all top to bottom. I may tell anyone last point. Yes. You should come here. Don't fear. <laughs> I want to uh, see good drama play. And so many drama players are here. <laughs> so you should make daily or Next day, like this. Very soon, tomorrow you should make a drama play. Very attractive and with good teachings. Go. Oh. Everything is an emanation of Krishna simultaneously. The same as Krishna, yet the same. Not, not working? Not so well. Also, you should take. Yeah, let's be careful. Krishna. It is the effect of your... So... <laughs> all of our emotions, all of our relationships, everything that we do is actually an emanation from Krishna. It can be one, in one of two worlds, either in the world inhabited or controlled by Yogamaya, which is Krishna's internal potency, or Mahamaya, which is Krishna's external potency. We find ourselves inhabiting a world full of joy, of sorrow, and relationships. In this world, which is a reflection of the spiritual world, Srila Rupa Goswami came and described that the culmination of all human activities, which is art, which is love, which is satisfaction, happiness, and um, um, intimacy. Srila Rupa Goswami gathered all of these things together and said, these things aren't the property of mundane poetry. 
These aren't the property of mundane the theatrics or the, or the property of, of mundane relationships. Srila Rupa Goswami reclaimed all, of our, um, all emotional property, happiness, sadness, anger, frustration. He reclaimed all of these things for Sri Krishna. This verse is saying that in all of our relationships, in everything that we do, everything that we say, everything that we think, in an unbroken stream, like honey, everything that we do should be in relationship to please Sri Krishna. There should be no other goal in our life and no other goal in every single action in our life except to please Sri Krishna and to make Krishna happy. In doing this, he mentions two things, karma and jnana. Karma is activity. Is I had a really beautiful experience in Mathura with my godbrother, dear godbrother, Radhanath Prabhu. Probably many of you have had your um, feathers ruffled by Radhanath Prabhu. Radhanath Prabhu and I were massaging Gurudev every day, and Gurudev would have, we would come and he would ask us to recite a sloka. So this was the sloka that he wanted us to learn. So we came in, and, he, and we recited the Sanskrit, and he asked us to give the meaning of this sloka. So he asked me first, and I started giving him meaning. I said, we should not perform actions. And he said, what actions? He said, Gurudev Guru said, you have to breathe. Yes, I have to breathe. So you have to eat? Yes, I have to eat. You have to think? Yes, I have to think. So what is the meaning of not performing action? The meaning of this is that we should not perform any action that obscures or interferes with our connection to Krishna. This is the meaning of, of action devoid of this propensity, satisfying our senses, satisfying the nature of the world, what people say we should do. The other aspect is knowledge. That was karma. This is jnana, knowledge. So we have to think. Do you have to think, Lily? Yes, I have to think. You have to use your conceptions of not walking into the street when there's cars coming? Yes, we do. But the idea is, is that when intel intellectual speculation or when knowledge interferes with the understanding that Sri Krishna is so sweet, so wonderful, and so genuine, he's the first, he and Srimati Radhika are the prototypical human beings. The reason why you have two ears and a nose and a mouth is because of Srimati Radhika and Krishna. The reason why there's trees grow in this world, the reason why there's animals, everything comes from Vrindavan. Everything has been exported from Vrindavan. Srila Rupa Goswami has come to this world to show that yes, these are exported from this Dham. They have their source there. So don't do anything in this world that obscures your relationship with Krishna and your love for Sri Krishna. This is basic, this is the conception that I have of this particular shloka of Srila Rupa Goswami. Oh, but what is the meaning? Anukulena Krishna Anushan, we have not defined. Anukulena Krishna Anushan. You defined Anna Vilasta, Gyanka. But what is the meaning? That all of our actions should be pleasurable for Krishna. Anukulena. Anukulena. Oh, no. Anukulena. 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 <laughs> so the intrinsic, there's intrinsic meaning to the verse and an extrinsic meaning to the verse. The intrinsic meaning to, the, to this verse is that all of our actions should be pleasurable for Krishna. Mm -hmm. What? Not favorable because right. Chanur and Mustik, they pleased him but they didn't have a desire to. Our god brothers and sisters and uncles and aunts and <laughs> are mentioning this, this concept of Chanur and Mustik. Chanur and Mustik were two wrestlers in the arena of Kamsa that tried to kill Krishna. So Krishna had a mood of heroism, a mood to fight. So these, in order to fulfill Krishna's desire, these two wrestlers went out to try to kill Krishna and try to kill Balaram. Seemingly, this was pleasurable to Krishna. But Srila Rupa Goswami was pointing out that because these two wrestlers desired to kill Krishna, this actually was not pleasurable for Krishna. It was not... It was not favorable for Krishna for their Krishna consciousness. <laughs> Most importantly, I think that this the reason was this is not favorable for our Krishna consciousness. Because if Krishna were to, then how would he fulfill the rest of his pastimes? So Srimati Yasoda, for example, Srimati Yasoda scolded Krishna. She bound Krishna to a mortar and makes Krishna cry and calls Krishna names. And it seemingly is this but is not pleasurable for Krishna. Krishna's upset. But in actuality, she is increasing Krishna's love. Her relationship with Sri Krishna is born of intimacy. And in that, 
she pulls Krishna closer and increases Krishna's happiness by doing that. Thank you. So, Srila Rupa Goswami has explained what is Uttama Bhakti. From this word Uttama Bhakti, as Rupa Goswami has told in this is slow, then there should be Madhyama Bhakti, Kanishta Bhakti. It may be. Like some mixture of Bhakti, of Gyan, Karma, Yoga, Tapasya. And so it has been told, Uttama Bhakti means pure Bhakti or Suddha Bhakti. So Bhakti Vinod Thakur has told, in his Tattva Vivek, that there are something resembling to Bhakti, but not really Bhakti. We do some, so many things in the name of bhakti. Bhagavat kahe taha paripurna chale dharma prajjita kaito attar parmo nirmasarana shata. In this word, relative word, there are so many things in the name of dharma which are not really dharma. They are what? Karma. Cheating dharma. Not pure dharma. They are cheating. So something we do in the name of bhakti, really not bhakti. Hmm? Anyone can follow Suddha bhakti in the stage of madhyam uttam or uttam stage, uttam bhagavata stage. Not really in kanishta and those, I know that so many are, that even no con conist, no conist, they can have, they have no conceptions of, conception of or real bhakti, uttama bhakti. But we do. Why do? Hmm? Oh, not good association. Guru Dev gave mantra and he was trying to develop us our heart. But at that time, we couldn't fall. So sometimes, Rupa Goswami has collectively divided of thousands and thousands kinds of bhakti, of tamasic bhakti, rasic bhakti, sattvic bhakti, nirgun bhakti, Karma Mishra Bhakti, Gyan Mishra Bhakti, Yoga Mishra Bhakti. So many. These are not pure Bhakti, Uttama Bhakti. Uttama Bhakti, like Mother Jasoda, even chastising Krishna, Krishna weeping, but it is more than Uttama Bhakti. You know that to defeat anyone is not good for that defeated person. He will be. But Krishna was defeated by his friends and he was smiling <laughs> and telling what? I have defeated you. You have not defeated. My nose is up. <laughs> like tricky? Lalit <laughs> So, Krishna, by what our service he will be oh, so happy. And the mood of our mood should be that we should serve Krishna. That mood. This mood should not be like to kill Krishna and to huh? to Krishna. This should be there. That is why it has been told Ankulena. Ankulen means what? Favorable. Favorable. 
It should not be unfavorable, like the example, Sharuna and Mustikans, Kansa and other. They were not favorable. But anyhow, Krishna was very happy by wrestling. And Mother Joshoda tightened him, and Krishna was with him. But yet it is Uttama more than Uttama Bhakti. So, it should not be separate. Uh, unseparate. Hmm? But this is not this symptom of Bhakti Mo. Whole symptom. What? Ankurishne Anushilanam Bhakti. Hmm? Anything cannot like any flower, any tree at the time of Krishna. They cannot serve Krishna. Krishna can come on the shade of trees and he can take some fruits from them. And thus he can take service from them. Anything more, whether he is unfavorable, but whether his action is to serve Krishna or not, this, this is the main thing. So, Anusilam, all, our all kinds of endeavor, by body, mind, by words, by bhav, keeping aside unfavorable things, always in the bhavi, like unbroken stream of honey. This. Now, this is like a barometer, measure, measuring scale. You can take it and give a scale in your heart, whether or, or bhakti is pure or what. Reply at once, it will come. Your moods are like Mother Jasoda, Shaka, or Gopis, unbroken in day and night, twenty-four hours, without break. You take meal for Krishna or yourself. You should take your meal for Krishna. But how it can? You are sleeping. You should sleep for Krishna, not for you, but you are sleeping for yourself. Gopis sleeping and they are walking. Everything for Krishna. So try to be like that. Try to endeavor all your energy to please Krishna in favorable way. Or oh, unbroken stream, then it will be bhakti. But Srila so Goswami has told that this is Uttama Bhakti. In Siddhavastha. Siddhavastha, you know what is? Perfection stage. For them it has been told. 